Today we're reading Mildred and Sam. And all you mamas out there will recognize just what Mildred went through. Please like, share, and subscribe. House Dreams Mildred and Sam lived in a tiny house underneath the daffodil roots. Sam was happy there, but Mildred was fidgety. There's no room for visitors, Mildred said. Visitors, Sam asked. But Mildred only sighed. <sighs> One day, Mildred and Sam climbed high in the old oak tree. Wouldn't it be nice to live here, asked Mildred. I like our house just fine, Sam said. There's plenty of room, said Mildred. True, Sam said, but there is no door to keep us safe from the great owl. Mildred only sighed. <sighs> that night, Mildred dreamed that she and Sam lived in the branches of the big oak tree. In the dream, the great owl came and carried them away. They flew much too far from home, so Mildred and Sam had to make a fast escape. The next day, Mildred and Sam had a picnic on a lily pad. Wouldn't it be nice to live here, Mildred asked. I like our house just fine, Sam said. There's plenty of room, said Mildred. True, Sam said, but there's no door to keep us safe from things that live in the bottom of the pond. Mildred only sighed. <sighs> that night, Mildred dreamed that she and Sam lived on a great big lily pad. In the dream, the frogs and fishes took Mildred and Sam for a swim. Down, down, down they went. It was much too deep. So Mildred and Sam had to make a fast escape. The next day, Mildred and Sam had tea and cookies in the rose thicket. Wouldn't it be nice to live here, asked Mildred. I like our house just fine, Sam said. There is plenty of room, said Mildred. True, Sam said, but there's no door to keep us safe from nosy bunnies. Mildred only sighed. <sighs> that night, Mildred dreamed that she and Sam lived deep in the rose thicket. In the dream, an army of baby bunnies appeared and stole all their cookies. Finally, a mama bunny came and scolded her babies. While she was scolding, Mildred and Sam decided to make a fast escape. The next day, Sam got up extra early. I think it's time to make you a bigger burrow, he told Mildred. And he began to dig underneath the daffodil roots. The new house would have plenty of room for visitors, just in case. Garden Dreams Sam worked on the new house, but Mildred became fidgety again. Why don't you go and visit your mother, Sam said. But Mildred did not want to visit. Why don't you paint a picture, Sam asked. But Mildred didn't want to paint. I think I'll plant a garden, she said at last. So she ordered some seeds. The next day, Mildred's seeds arrived. Among the vegetable seeds, there was an unmarked packet. I did not order these, Mildred said. Maybe they're special seeds, said Sam. Maybe something amazing will grow. Mildred took one seed from the unmarked packet and planted it next to her carrots. That night, Mildred dreamed that she grew a bushel of baby gourds. Hello, baby gourds, Mildred said. She invited them all into the new house Sam had built. Inside the house, the baby gourds sat on the furniture and slept in the bed and crowded around the kitchen table. Even in the big new house, there was no room for Mildred and Sam. Mildred, Sam cried. When you said you might have visitors, I did not think you meant a bushel of baby gourds. Mildred tried to round up the babies. The little gourds thought it was a game. They all went running out of the house Eee! they squealed. 
Suddenly, two big gourds came out of the woods. Our babies, yelled Mama Gourd. See here, mouse, Papa Gourd said. That seed you planted did not belong to you. The big gourds marched off back into the woods, and their babies followed close behind. The next day, Mildred sent the unmarked seeds back, but first she made sure to put a penny in the packet to pay for the one seed she had planted. As she watered her garden, she looked at the ground. She would have to wait and see what her penny would bring. Later that day, Mildred told Sam she would help him with the house. I think we need an extra room, said Mildred. An extra room, Sam asked, scratching his head. I think the house will be big enough. You never know, Mildred said. Mouse Dreams After the new house was all finished, Sam was happy, but Mildred was still fidgety. Mildred remembered the oak tree and the picnic. She remembered the tea and the cookies. She got out her brushes and began to paint. She painted frogs and fish. She painted bunnies and baby gourds. She even painted the great white owl. Ooh, ooh. When Mildred was finished painting, she began to sew. She sewed blankets out of roses and daffodils. She even sewed slip covers out of lily pads. When Mildred was finished sewing, she began to knit. She knitted tiny socks and pajamas. She even knitted a big scarf for Sam. When Mildred was finished knitting, she began to bake. She baked ginger root muffins and sunflower seed pie. Mm -mm. She even made honeysuckle jam. Yum, yum. When Mildred was finished baking, she finally settled down for a rest. The very next day, Mildred and Sam's new house was filled with visitors. Eight tiny baby mice. And the house was big enough for all of them. And now we know why Mildred was so fidgety. <laughs> ah, thank you so much for listening. I hope you liked that story. As Tigger says, ta-ta for now. I love you guys. Bye-bye.